and welcome to this week's vlog and today's dip it. I've started off the week rather strong by reading six, six graphic novels. Woohoo! So what happened was, it's all on the Hoopla app. What I've read is making friends, making friends uh, back to the drawing board, ma and making friends third time's the charm by Kristen Gutsnick, allergic right by um, Megan Wagner Lloyd and Dune 1 and 2 like the graphic novels and I have you know it's just what happened was that when I was working at the bookstore yesterday that I saw the graphic novel for making friends I was tempted to pick it up and then I was like no no I won't and then I realized this morning that why not just check the Hoopla app and see if it's there and guess what it was and all three of them were there and suggested allergic as well as Dune but here's the thing I could spend all day and I legitimately mean read all day reading Dune comics. So I've had a, to bust up to it because I actually want to read a book. So that's what I'm going to do, right? But so far, so good. I am liking, I did like each and every one. And you can check out my shorts channel at Debate Yesternet to see, see my reviews on them all. And But uh, yeah, it's just... I didn't, I think I kind of knew, but I didn't really know the amount of Dune comic books that are out there. But now I do, and that's just something that it is. But, uh, I don't know. Like, it's just, I like to do, and I like the book and everything like that, but in a way, I kind of feel that I need to move on from it. And just, I don't know, like, I'm into it. I think that I really will, like, I don't I just I feel that I need to listen to the audiobooks and just it's it seemed I guess like the same thing with Percy Jackson that like I did like them all but uh I just feel that I kind of need to move on from these series and just focus on other series that I have like the Wheel of Time series you know maybe finish that right and maybe read my book of the month books, you know, maybe I should do that. <laughs> so I guess like my focus for this week, or just in general, is to read more longer form content like novels and to be uh, reading my book of the month books. So there's that. <clears throat> right? So I hope everybody's doing all right. Everybody's doing great. And, you know, we all have just a really fantastic life and enjoying the weather. And because it's supposed to warm up by the end of the week, well, technically it's uh, supposed to warm up tomorrow, be a high of 13 degrees, which I will believe it when I feel it kind of a thing. Because this morning when I went out to get a gra or to gra grab a coffee, it was negative five, feels like negative 10. So it being positive 13, tomorrow is like a 23 degree difference so you know that would be quite the change really fantastic but you know we'll have to see right but thumbs up thank goodness for graphic novels and uh we'll catch y'all later right bye Hey, welcome to this reading debate. I've now finished reading Heartless Hunter by Kristen Car Carelli. And oh my gosh, I can't wait for the next one. It is like a love story where that uh, they're hunting riches and they're trying to find like who is the Christmas moth that Rune uh, start it, each chapter goes between Rune and Gideon and Rune is the Crimson Moth and you can know because she bleeds black right and that one point in time Rune and Gideon get together but really that Rune really loves uh, Alex who is Gideon's brother at the end of the book I don't want to give any spoilers away but it is just that uh, Gideon almost had um, had had Rune and she was at the stake because she was going to be burned because that's what you do with witches but at the end everything just kind of unfolded so Gideon and the next book will be coming for Rune because she got away and it's the fact that she ended up loving Alex and not him and he's kind of pissed about that. So a scorned lover. Oh my goodness. Right? 
So I uh, am super excited and I can't wait for the second one. But uh, I'm not too sure which book I'm going to read next, right? But it's definitely either going to be Annie Bot or Interesting Facts About Space. I'm thinking Annie Bot just because it's smaller, but I'm going to read the descriptions of these nonetheless. And I'm going to go from there. But uh, thumbs up to The Heartless Hunter, The Crimson Moth, book one. All right. All right. Bye! Hello and welcome to this reading tip. Eh? So I've decided that I'm going to start reading Annie Bot and about uh, 60 pages in. The chapters are really long but what it's about is just, uh, or so far, is that this uh, you can get robots or <clears throat> our companion robots. They're all humanoid. You can get three different types. You can get a humanoid or they're all humanoid. You can custom out, customize them as much as you want. But you can get ones that are, say, domestic, clean up your house. You can have fully companion ones. They're there for uh, your adult needs. And you can get like, nannies. This one guy, he got to, uh, one just to be his companion. And then now he's gotten a second one to help out his first one. And so it's just about how the first robot that he got is jealous of the second one and he just doesn't know what to do or how they go about it so it's just kind of about that so far I'm really enjoying it and I can't wait to read more it's going to be a quick easy read I think but thumbs up to that all right all right so I've just finished reading Annie Bot by Sierra Greer and oh my gosh it is so good what it's about is just about robots who are becoming autonomous, right? Where like, we're so far in the future where you can have, you know, a robot like, who's a humanoid robot who can uh, become like a nanny or it can be like do domestic duties, be like kind of like, your, your partner, like your girlfriend or your boyfriend, or you can have like a robot to, that's more like your more for adult pleasures right and there's just so many things that like you can do with them and and it's just oh my goodness like now there's more variety of like female robots and there are men right uh robots that you can get and it's just about this guy he customizes his robot uh, his annie bot so well that the company who makes them uh, wants to purchase their the right to them and because he they are kind of self-learning and they can be taught to do things so what happens is that uh, when he, uh, Doug first makes a sale he goes to his friend who lives in Vegas to go share like the good news and he doesn't bring Annie with him and well uh, that is when Annie realizes that she wants to run away, so she tries to, after not running, being successful with that, and Doug end up, ends up catching her. He becomes, like, disgusted with her because he ends up finding out that her and his old friend ended up sleeping together, but at the very, very end, he ends up taking... Uh, setting Annie free in the sense where that uh, she can pass as fully human and she has her own birth certificate and how she's just now able to roam the earth or just do whatever she wills and wants to do and she can't believe that Doug after everything they've been through that uh, Doug has set her free and she doesn't know what to do with her newfound freedom, but she knows that she wants and she needs to do something with it, right? And it's just a really cute, uh, and how Annie just wants to be there for other robots. And it's like, it's really great. And just like the journey of like how far we've come with technology. And it's just, it is really great, right? I would highly suggest this. It's a four out of five stars for me. I enjoyed it more than what I thought I was going to. And it was just like a really good, uh, different book right? I'm happy that I made it uh, one of my book of the month picks and thumbs up from over here. All right. But that's kind of it for me. Hopefully everybody is doing all right and uh, we'll catch y'all later. All right.
Bye. Hello and welcome to this daily reading dip it or another reading dip it. So when I worked at the library, I accidentally, well, accidentally came up with a bunch of books. So it all kind of started when my hold, The River Enchanted by Rebecca Ross, came in. So I needed to grab that. Now I did start reading this on my e-reader and I started to read it, but then I just... I couldn't tell you what happened, so I figured I would like pick up the actual book and kind of read it, the physical book and the actual book together. But because I'm really digging my uh, book of the month books and that I need to read Yellow Face by R.F. Kuang and A Discovery of Witches to buy a... a was it? Uh, or a Deborah Harkness? That I kind of need to like give those books back so I think I might just end up giving this book back to the library and just call it and be like oh I'll try again on my reader we'll try again later but I don't know so we're just gonna set that aside for right now because I do have it out for three weeks so whatever and then as promised the library has one other Brian Snell's knock book and that is the Marvels so I figured I would try to give this a go right and then I picked up but the rest of my books are graphic novels. So, Tasty, A History of Yummy Experiments by Victoria Grace Elliott. Great. And then The Dark and Blue by Nikki Smith. The uh, Dungeon Crawlers Academy, book one, Into the Portal. And this is like a Dungeons and Dragons kind of uh, graphic novel. Uh, my Friends Are Ghosts. Right? So I figured that would be really cool. Or I guess that, uh, so this, uh, My Friends Are Ghosts is by S.M. Uh, Vid Viduri and Hannah Krager. Sorry, I'm mispronouncing your guys' names. Right? And, oh, sorry, the, uh, this one, this, uh, Dungeons uh, Crawlers Academy is by J.B. Sullivan and Elmer. Dab, uh, Dabaso, and then I got Just Friends by Tori Sharp, and then The Boy Who Became a Dragon, a Bruce Lee story by Jim D. Bartolo. So I think what it is is that uh, big. The longest word of it is, is that my goal for like this year was to read seventy five books. But because I've read so many graphic novels and books and like junior books and books like the uh, Bryce Selznick books that uh, are kind of graphic novels but uh, are not really graphic novels, they're actually junior books, that uh, um, I'm going to be meeting my 75 book mark by the end of April, so in the first four months over the year, I'm going to read 75 books. Right? And so, kind of like the reason why I picked up all these graphic novels is just like, why not just read as or get as many graphic novels as I can? Like, you know what I mean? Try to get uh, the, the 75 book thing out of the way. And I kind of realized that I'm the one who's setting these numbers, who's setting these arbitrary rules for myself. And so I figured that uh, as soon as I got uh, the 75 book thing out of the way, I'm just going to, you know, um, just focus on my TV or not buy any books or not buy, borrow any books from the library anymore just because like I have books right now. And then I've uh, also started to read No One Can Know by Kate uh, Alice Marshall. It's one of my book of the month book picks. From December so I figured that uh, and it's a thriller I've read the first couple chapters and I'm loving it so I figured I just kind of need to focus on that like books in which I actually want to be reading versus just books I'm like randomly picking up in the library so I figured the sooner I get all these like um, graphic novels out of the way or this getting the 75 number like thing out of the way because I'm like 22 books a away so with this, I should be well done. Like, I'm well on my way because I also have one other book I need to get, or a graphic novel, which I have coming at the library tomorrow. So, there's that long winded way of saying that I'm trying to get my bookish goal 
by the end of April, which will happen probably within the first week or two of April, just simply because it is the long weekend and because of that the bookstore is not open on Saturday and I don't have to work Monday night so I really, but we do have like dinner on Friday so I honestly do have like kind of a three full day weekend ahead of me which I know I can do and it's just I can spend all day Saturday and read all these graphic novels you know so it's not that big of a deal but here you are <laughs> all right thumbs up okay bye all right hello and to this reading dip it I have now finished all six of the graphic novels in which I picked up so I'm going to let you know what I thought about each one Dragon Collars Academy into the portal I thought was like super cute it's all about this kid here he's trying to fit in and these teachers they're like hey look at this it's the dungeon crawlers right and yeah, like all these are like dungeon or D&D like characters which are helping him out or he to be as successful and he's just a kid who's just trying to fit in and he's doesn't know what he's getting in for. Tasty, a history of yummy experiments, right, is just, you know, you got how uh, olives and pickles, cheese, pizza, and gelatin, how were they, how were they made? And it even comes with like little recipes that you can uh, make for yourself if you so choose, which I thought was great. Just pretend is just, which I think I, I earlier called it like just friends, but it's just pretend. And it's about these two best friends and how they uh, create these like she's an artist and how she creates all these like little adventures for her and her friends to go on which I thought was like super cute okay and all my friends are ghosts which I thought was another adorable little story uh graphic novel I guess it's about this student she gets like teased and bullied at school she doesn't really have any friends and so she got embarrassed at school she ends up running into running away running into uh these ghosts and then she ends up making friends with them and she goes to like the ghost uh council or the meeting but then ultimately she ends up they come up calling themselves like the lost souls club her and her friends there are ghosts that was weird right but it was still fun i mean the boy who became a dragon the bruce lee story i thought it was really cute <clears throat> there's a great little depiction of where he came from and who he is today and how just the japan culture is just something different and good and how he came to Hollywood and became like a superstar and I don't know, just a fun little fascinating story about Bruce Lee. Really well done. And then the deep and the dark blue is just about these two kids, Grayson and Grace. And how their tradition is like very weaving into them and how they have to like fight and you know be respectful kind of gender roles but how they want to break out of it and just and how like the color blue and how the like, girls have to wear like, these dresses and how they don't want to be typecast into the characters in which they are but they uh, make do right and they end up fighting for each other and finding their way out and they're uh, you know really adorable thumbs up i would say that out of all of them that uh all my friends are ghosts and tasty were probably my favorite hello and welcome to this reading dip it so i finally finished the marvels by brian selznick it was really good it was it's the most wordy or has most story of, of the, all the ones i've read by him and that was really good and the marvels is just about like this tv personalities or like uh like stage production personalities and i thought it was like really well done i really liked it and it's just kind of like a cute little like that like roundup of just how you can be envious of people who are like famous and how you really do marvel over them I really that did like that and oh yeah and so then on uh, my Kobo I ended up finding uh, by Brian Selznick Big Tree which is really great and that big tree was just like a little like a little sprout of a tree that came up during the dinosaur age and how it just like saw a lot of things two asteroids came one was friendly the other was not and that how because of the se second asteroid it kind of disappeared but then it came back and it was like really fantastic now 
on my Hoopla app, you're only allowed to borrow eight titles a month, and so I wasn't able to borrow it, and not until next month, but I hear that Kaleidoscope is one of the best ones. I may be going to try my OneDrive later on to see if I can get it there sooner, but I am going to try that. But when I was at the library tonight, I ended up picking up three more graphic novels, and I have now finished reading them, so I'll tell you what they were. So I ended up picking up Swift team by Johnny uh, Christmas and it's about like this kid who, who wants to join the swim team but she can't swim and you know what she is able to learn how to swim and basically become uh, help win the championship so that was really nice right and then I got operatic by Kyle uh, McClear and this one was really great because it was just about this girl she really dreamed of being an opera singer and wanted to be one but she doesn't know where to start so she starts singing and this one came with like a bookmark already kind of inside or built into the book and so I sectioned off picture of like just like her favorite opera singer and she sang so beautifully that a butterfly of sound came out. I thought that was really well uh, really well depicted and just how sometimes you want to sing that beautifully and then of course I got Percy, J Percy Jackson the Olympians and the Last Olympian. I thought this was really well done. A nice little wrap up to the Percy Jackson series. I'm happy that I picked up these graphic novels. And this one, you know, obviously it's just about <laughs> fighting the other gods. And of course, the demigods have to win, right? Because that's just the way that it is. Hey, this one was really well done. My favorite, I think, because it was so highly anticipated from last week. I read this one the fastest, really enjoyed it, and I would highly recommend you know, thumbs up. Alright, bye. Hello and welcome to this dip -in. And as you can see, I decided I got into a coloring mood. And uh, this is what I ended up coloring. I used some Hensel crayons. And it's hope, because you always have to have hope. So it's got kind of like faith, hope, and trust. You have to have the faith that you are in the right place at the right time. Hope that, because uh, if you lose all hope, you've lost everything. And you just got to trust the process, right? But, uh, I know it's kind of very blue. I didn't know, I was hoping that it was maybe going to be a little bit more colorful, but you know what? Happy with how it turned out. And I kind of wanted to color another one, but they do take a very long time to do. So maybe kind of do one tomorrow or maybe later on tonight. I don't know, but I just thought I would share just, you know, just being a little crafty here and Right, I got this coloring book like a couple of years ago and it's just, you know, when you want to do a little bit of an adult coloring and and you just want to lounge around and relax, these kind of books are really great and they're very small pictures so it's, uh, yeah, like, it does take up time to do but uh, it's not overly concerning when it's, because it's not like that big, like an 8.5 by 11 so... I don't know. Very compact, a lot you can do in just a simple little one. Right? So I just wanted to share that. Hopefully everybody is doing all right. And uh, we'll catch you later in the next dip-in. All right. Bye. Hello and welcome to this dip-it. I've now finished reading No One Can Know and what it's about. Oh, it's by Kate Alice Marshall. I've read her other book, uh, What Lies in the Woods, and this is another thriller. It's about the, their parents have died. The, this girl, Emma... Daphne and Juliet, their parents have died. Everybody in the small town thinks that Emma did it, but did she really? Was it one of the was it another sibling? Who knows, right? But everybody thinks that she did do it. So that is just kind of like who done it, the suspicions, and then Emma moves back into her parents' house and da 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 her husband Nathan dies. So it's just did Emma really do it? Hmm. And it was just a really good thriller. Really enjoyed it. Glad I picked this as my book of the month book. And I think this was my uh, December read and I just kind of around reading it now. Don't tell anybody. But I have now started reading 
Interesting Facts About Space by Emily Austin, and this is another book of the month pick. I'm about like 30 pages into it, so far I'm captivated by it, and I can't wait to, and this is more of a love story, I believe, but yeah, can't wait to finish here and get more. This one's like a bit of a shorter book, but uh, so far so good, right? Can't complain, all right? So that's it for this uh, dip, in, and we'll see y'all later. Bye. All right, hello, and welcome everybody to this uh, divot and the closing of the vlog. I did do some knitting yesterday, but I really just want to focus on the books that I've read. I finished reading No One Can Know, and I've started reading Interesting Facts About Space. Woohoo! Which is uh, really good. And I think that uh, after this, I might read Yellow Face, but I'm not sure. I definitely want to get all of my Book of the Month books finished by the end of, uh, well, today is also the last day of March, so I can't get them all done by the end of the March, but uh, at least I'll get them done by the end of next week, which I'm sure uh, I can read two books in one week. My schedule will allow for it. I just need to, you know, actually do something about it, right? which is always going to be a great thing, and yeah, so far, interesting facts about space is uh, really cute. You are getting certain facts about space, and you're just like following this girl, and she really isn't uh, uh, doing much with her life, but she's having a good time with what she's doing, right? But so far, so good, and yeah, I guess like that is just the only update that I have, and you know, well, thank you for turning in, tuning into this week's vlog, and uh, we'll see you next week. All right, bye.